Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is a continuation of my AD&D 2nd Edition coverage and as you can see I will be taking a look at the complete book of Humanoids by Bill Slavicek. I'm uh, hoping I pr pronounced that correctly. Uh, here I do have the, the book itself and um, once again another really incredible conditioned copy for a book that was originally released in I'm going to say like 93 ish but let's see if I find yes yeah, so 1993 so um, so quite some time ago and it really is an excellent condition and uh, I, I'm really glad that I was able to get so many of these uh, splat books from eBay and and fairly you know not not cheaply but but certainly not expensive either you know I paid between like 30 and let's say on the outside $40 for each of these and, and like I said they're in really very good condition uh, thus far so um, now to the book itself this really does read very much like a um like a compendium pulled from the monster manuals and there isn't the same level of depth into um the culture and the you know and the traditions and the backgrounds and and everything um because it is a complete book of humanoids and so there are many many um, included in here so I'm going to just um, switch screens here and just go over the table of contents and and you'll see what I'm talking about so let me switch here and uh, this is a copy I, I pulled off of uh, you know PDF that I pulled off the internet um, which I don't have a problem using because I do have the physical copies of everything that I'm covering uh, so here we go and um, so I haven't gotten into the introduction just yet like Kalung's tale and what are humanoids so uh, I will eventually get around to reading all of this content I was really skimming through this and looking to see once again as a comparison to the previous complete books of you know the elves the dwarves the gnomes and the halflings and seeing what they um you know what the writer had done here and once again it's a brand new writer or a different writer for each of these so far and um and and so each of these have a slightly different uh tone to them or focus of them and uh this one here i think um loses out on the fact that they're including so many different humanoid races in here that it really does just read off like a like a monster manual um, and and even in some cases with even less information about each individual one than the previous monster manuals actually had so you you can see here it has the uh, aracocra um the al uh allergy beast men bugbears bully wugs advanced um centaurs fremlin uh giant king phil uh fur bolt uh giant kin vodkin uh knolls uh finned knolls uh, which are actually kind of interesting uh goblins hobgoblins kobolds lizard men Minotaurs, uh, mongrel man, uh, ogres and half ogres, ogre magi, orcs and half orcs, pixie, satyr, surreal, swan maze, and wemix. All right, and then it has the uh, it has the very generic tr uh, kits. So warrior kits are tribal defenders, mine rowdies, pit fighters. Soriel Paladins, Cell Swords, uh, Wilderness Protectors, the Wizard Kits are Hedge Wizards, Humanoid Scholars, and Outlaw Mages. 
the priest kits are shamans, witch doctors, oracles, war priests, and wandering mystics. The rogue kits are scavengers, tramps, tunnel rats, shadow, and humanoid bards. For humanoid proficiencies, we have the both the proficiencies and specialization, non-weapon proficiencies, such as acting alertness, uh, animal noise, uh, begging, blind fighting, chanting, cheese making, uh, that's a pretty interesting one, uh, close quarter fighting, craft instrument, crowd working, danger sense, uh, drinking, eating, fast talking, fortune telling, hiding, information gathering, intimidation, looting, natural fighting, observation, poetry, voice mimicry, whistling and humming, wild fighting and winemaking. Another interesting thing, I guess if a winemaker and a cheesemaker come together, uh, they can uh, they can throw together a business. Uh, Role-playing humanoids, so life as a humanoid, tribal life, and in many cases they're going to uh, they're going to write about how humanoids do have some difficulty uh, integrating in the other um, in the other uh, demi-human and human societies. So there's there is that kind of cooked into the books uh, in a way of them being somewhat of outcasts, uh, even if they are a PC and even if they are of uh, even good alignment, that they will still carry the stigma of their humanoid background. Uh, into their into interactions. Now, this doesn't apply to all of them, but uh, a great majority of them are going to have a difficult time integrating into um, the common culture of humans, elves, dwarves, gnomes, and, and, and even halflings to a certain extent. Uh, let's see, so we have superstitions, and, uh, and the world, superstitions in game terms, uh, using superstitions to play. So again, this is all giving uh, ideas about how to uh, role play humanoids accurately. Uh, chapter seven is arms and armor, humanoid comparison charts, humanoid character sheets, and then a whole bunch of tables. So let's jump to the comparison chart. This will be interesting, I think. And um, let's get to the actual thing. Oh, so this is a size comparison chart. So we have, um, see cobalt's I would put them much smaller than, uh, than what is shown here next to the goblin. Uh, cobalt's tend to be even even smaller than that. So that's kind of interesting. Um, a, an orc, and a half orc should be a little bit taller than a human. And I think orcs should be slightly larger than what they're shown here. Mongrel men, I've always thought of being slightly smaller than this. So this is a very interesting thing. This is my first time looking at these comparison charts and, um, you know, and, and I can see that some of them are, you know, I think just slightly off. Um, like half ogres should be much larger than this uh, compared to a human. I mean, they're, they're just slightly above uh, the human line here that you can see, um, but they should be much larger than that. Um, I guess, I guess when you're coming to this other category, all of these are slightly taller than the human. Maybe that's how I'm misreading this. And so they would be, you know, several steps above the height of a human. Um, it would have been help helpful if they had the, the size chart on the side uh, telling you which, which is the six foot mark, let's say and so on because this giant, if I took this giant, this human, and put next to this giant, I'm guessing the humans 
top line here would be this dark line here. Um, and, and so maybe that's, that's where they're going with this, is that the human height line is this dark line that kind of shows you where the human falls. Um, again, it, they could have been a little bit more clear as to how this chart is working. Um, let me just flip this and oh, too many times. There we go. So, um, so we have the various kits that are laid out here, uh, human sizes. So yeah, let's see. So a human is going to be, um, the base of 60 inches tall and uh, cobalt's only 32. Let's put cobalt's next to goblins of 43. Again, I always pictured cobalt's being smaller, maybe half the size of goblins, but all right. Um, so let's see where that half ogre is. So a half ogre and ogres are 84 inches tall compared to, so about two feet taller than humans. Uh, on, on the larger side. Now, humans can get a 2D10, um, so they could go up to 80 inches, and a ogre or half ogre can gain another 12, so to go up as high as 96. Um, and for the half ogres, um, a little bit less than that. Uh, I'm adding 12 to that, so 90. Um, so anyway, um, interesting stuff. Uh, their age ranges, all right, that's kind of interesting. I always wanted to see what they'd say an orc age range is going to be. Base age is 10 years old. Uh, D4 variable, so they could be 11 to 14 at the start. Um, and their maximum age range is up to 45 years old. M average is 40 um, maximum age, so pretty interesting how low that is. Um, Humans in a fantasy medieval setting, I would not put them at a, you know, at an average maximum range of 110. That's kind of, that's kind of weird too. Uh, I guess it's a world of magic and so they're going to add a little bit more to it, um, you know, but uh, not everybody is going to have access to magic. So that's kind of interesting to me as well. But uh, you can see there's plenty of charts and everything here. You can, um, let's take a look, let's flip this again. And let's take a look at a monster character sheet. See how that's any different than a regular, or I should say humanoid character sheet. See how that's any different from a regular character sheet. And so far I'm not seeing any real difference here. Um, so a humanoid warrior, a humanoid wizard, a humanoid priest, a rogue, then a generic uh, back page of, you know, their gear and other things as well. Pretty cool advertisement. <laughs> always, good, always really cool to see the, the old advertisements from back then. But anyway, um, so, for the most part, I, I find this one not as useful as others. Um, and I think that there's, there's probably more resources uh, to get a better flavor for each of these humanoid backgrounds from, uh, from AD&D First Edition, from, you know, the Monster Manuals, uh, you know, Monster Manual 1, 2, and, uh, and the Fiend Folio. Um, I think that there's, uh, probably from Dragon Magazines as well, uh, probably has a much richer um, catalog of information for each of these if they did in fact appear in Dragon Magazine. So um, overall, I I'm certainly happy that I still have it um, because it does complete the collection. But um, I, I think that it could have covered less of these, you know, and and stuck to maybe some of the more 
main ones that we would know and that way they could dedicate a little bit more time to them um you know i guess aracocra or i mean that's practically a race that they don't use anymore because it's it's kind of broken in the in the game system now obviously they wouldn't have thought of it that back then but um i would remove you know quite a few of them um, first of all, giant kin like uh, Furbold and Vodkin, um, I would they're giants. They're not really humanoids to the extent that they would fall into a different category uh, all on their own. And there should be a complete guide of uh, or complete book of giants, uh, you know, to to add to this series. I, I would have I would have made some uh, modifications. I would have taken uh, the main ones like orcs and goblins and hobgoblins uh, and, and ogres uh, and gnolls and put them in a separate book just by themselves. And that way they could have dedicated a lot more time to information on their, um, their creation myth and their, their uh, tribal uh, or, or other kind of breakdown of their clannish uh, societies and you know how does religion and you know culture you know affect them as well and and go through and really cover them in much more detail than putting you know 30 in one book so uh, but for the again I really did enjoy looking through it and seeing some of the you know some of the uh, some of the different ones that I wasn't familiar with uh, but um, I think that there's better sources uh, to if you were going to let one of your players play one of these uh, humanoid races, then I would certainly research and look for other content to actually help guide them in how to uh, play uh, this kind of a character uh, much more effectively. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to disagree with me or you like. Uh, you know, I, I would I would love to have a conversation over it and we can go back and forth if you wish. Uh, if you agree with me, uh, you know, that's great too. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon. Um, please remember to, uh, to subscribe and share and like and comment on the video. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you also at a gaming convention. So I just put up an announcement for an interview that I'm going to have this upcoming Saturday at 12 noon. I will be uh, interviewing the, uh, the creator of the Central New York RPG convention, uh, Roger. And I don't want to butcher his name, so it's, it's Roger, and you can look in the you can look in my uh, my community notes to see uh, that upcoming event. Plus, I just posted the link for the uh, for the live stream there, so you can also take a look at it there as well. So, really looking forward to speaking to him about a convention that may very well become the fifth convention in my continuing. Um, annual cycle of conventions that I attend uh, almost every year or certainly uh, hopefully every year going forward uh, hit those five conventions so this is a, a fairly local convention for me just three hours away um, still requires a hotel stay but um, you know really looking forward to it and really looking forward to have a, a good discussion with him and uh, and talk about uh, creating a convention and getting a convention launched and and getting into some of the behind the scenes that goes into uh, that really monumental task because I think it is a big big task to get those kinds of things uh, you know up and running so as always thanks for joining have a great uh, remainder of your you know weekend uh, this being a Sunday evening at 8 30 practically uh, but enjoy your weekend uh, week coming up uh, if you're in the Northeast like I am we're looking at some really great weather coming forward so looking forward to that and uh, 
Looking forward to getting to my Castles and Crusades game on Tuesday and then my, uh, my Fallout game on uh, Thursday uh, at noon. And uh, my Castles and Crusades where I'm playing uh, as, a, as a character, uh, I'm playing in my Castles and Crusades uh, this upcoming Friday. And then hopefully we can get the Shadow Dark uh, back on track uh, Saturday. So plenty of gaming looking forward uh, to this upcoming week. And uh, again, let's wrap it up. You have a great one. Take care. Thanks for stopping in.